Dear friends in Christ, indeed, we serve a God who saves. And on this Sunday, I'd like us to reflect on the God who saves and those whom he chooses to save. Those whom he uses in his salvific work. God's work of salvation began long ago. It began since the fall of man. God began his work of bringing him back, of restoring him, of bringing him up from shame and disgrace to the exalted position he had desired for humanity from the beginning. For of all the things he created, he distinguished humanity from the rest, for he created us in his own image and likeness. So whenever a soul is saved, glory to God. Whenever any good work is carried out, God be praised. For only him has the ability and the total will to save to save his people, his children, the followers of Christ. In the Old Testament, as we listen to on the first reading today, we can see God saving his people from slavery in Egypt, and via he uses Moses, Moses the stammerer. He uses him to lead his people out of slavery in Egypt. Moses was not only a stammerer, Moses also killed he had blood in his hands. All this happened before God chose him to walk in the salvation of his people. It is amazing that God, who has all the ability to do everything, chooses to choose mere humans in his work of saving humanity. And our expectation naturally would be that if even if God chooses to save us by using us, he should go for the best out of us, the most qualified, the most dignified, but that isn't the criteria of God when he chooses men and women to work for the salvation of souls. So whenever we feel called to a particular ministry and eventually we begin to minister However impactful we have become, let it remain in our consciousness that our activeness in ministry is never a product of 
our merit. We do not deserve. We do not qualify. We are unworthy. It is just a sheer privilege to have been able to do anything good, to have been able to help anyone in society because all power to do good comes from God and he alone is worthy of the glory that arises with good deeds in the world. This mass begins with that very great prayer that acknowledges that without him, mortal frailty can do nothing. We may want to look back at the very good, great moments we have had, the people we have assisted, the best things we have done, we were only able to accomplish all those because God enabled us. If we recognize that God and God alone is the one who saves, then whenever we are instrumental, we have been used in saving anyone from any ugly situation we would not allow it to get into our heads freely because we were not qualified we received freely we ought to give scripture tells us in the gospel passage today come to think about the composition of the apostles the 12 today that he he chooses to work for him, all of them had their limitations. From amongst them, we have Simon the Zealot, who was very prone to, to violence. We had Peter, who denied him three times, even with the prophecy before that, that would have prevented him. We have also Judas Iscariot, who eventually betrayed him to death. So, on this day, I like us, as we appreciate that God alone is our savior, and that we should look to him for all we need to be saved from. Let us also never begin to idolize anyone whom God uses in saving us from any situation. And for those of us who have been used and whom God still uses, may it never get into our minds that we are the ones orchestrating anything good in the world. For we too become saved by allowing God to save the world through us. It is in allowing him to flow, to move his goodness through us, that we too become saved. So the quality that God demands ultimately to be active in his vineyard is submissiveness. God does not need us to be strong for he is almighty, he is all-powerful. Human institutions, human organizations, when they put out notice for employment, the criteria is usually the person has to be so astoundingly good. The focus is on the strength. In the terms of our relationship, the roles God has assigned us, 
He doesn't need us to be strong. He just needs us to submit, to surrender. Because he has got all the power, he has got all the wisdom to regulate us, to move in us and through us. So if we look at those who were very instrumental in the work of God, they were not people who wanted to do it themselves, who wanted to force God to do things. They have always been those who allow God to use them as he wishes. Sometimes when we feel called to ministry, we begin to evaluate ourselves and how grossly inadequate we are. We count our shortcomings and they become so many. And very often too, we give up. How can I? God does not need you. He does not call the qualified. He qualifies those whom he calls. He just wants us to be at his service. And he will take the lead. During one of the sessions we had while we were in the seminary, we had a a scripture scholar who came in and told us about the significance of the choice of finger that holds the ring in marriage. And that is this finger. That, that finger is the weakest. You may want to try it. It's so stiff, it can't do anything. It can't even move fast as the rest fingers. That that finger is chosen because it is in reliance on God's strength and acknowledging human weakness that the marriage would thrive, that the marriage would work. So if we rely on our power, on our knowledge, on our wisdom, we would fail in our vocations, be it the priestly vocation or even the vocation of marriage. In the second reading today, the the Apostle Paul reminds us that even when we were sinners, Christ died for us. This again emphasizes how whatever we are today is not a product of our doing. God is the one that has made the positive difference in our lives. He is the one that makes the perfect choices. But he who makes perfect choices too chooses the weak. So if your husband is weak, it doesn't mean that he is not the choice of God. If your wife is weak, that does not indicate that she is not God's choice. All that matters is taking everything to the master. He alone who can save us. He alone who can strengthen us. May God open our eyes, our minds, that we all be conscious of what God is doing in our lives and how he can use anyone to perform wonders. May he bless us and his words in our hearts through Christ our Lord.